Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. I can't believe that we're already in September, but you know, I guess that's how time works. So I had a pretty ambitious TBR for August and I got through a good amount of it and I read some other things that weren't on the TBR, but there's still plenty left over. So if you watched my September TBR, you can see I carried over quite a few things from my August TBR, but uh, we'll start with some stats. I did finish nine books this month, if you include a couple of novellas, and there are also three books that I'm kind of in the middle of right now. So that makes a total of 12 books, if my math is correct. And now I'll read the rest of the stats from my phone because I'm not going to remember. So out of those books, one of the books were, was, one of them was a YA book, and then the other 11 were adult. There were three that were science fiction, one that was nonfiction, and eight that were fantasy. Also, I listened to two of those books on audiobook. I'll start out by just quickly mentioning the books that I'm still in the middle of reading. I did also talk about them in my September TBR, so you'll be hearing more about those books when I finish. But the first one is It's All Relative by A.J. Jacobs. This is a nonfiction book where the author is basically exploring genealogy and his own family history, as well as just the sort of idea of what it means to be related to people and how, you know, when it goes back enough generations, basically everyone in the world is related. And so he kind of takes, it's more of a humorous, not a super scientific look at this, but it's just more a look at things like um, different, you know, websites that you can use for genealogy. And also he starts this plan to hold the world's biggest family reunion and break the Guinness Book of World Records. So we'll see if he gets to do that or not. In general, uh, it's the first book I've read by A.J. Jacobs. I think he he's a nonfiction writer. I think he tends to sort of set himself like crazy challenges and then just use that as a vehicle to explore things and see where it goes. So I'm, I'm not loving it, but it's, you know, pretty enjoyable writing. It's pretty light. Uh, I think, I don't, I probably wouldn't recommend this, but it's, it's been fine. I'll, I might as well finish it. I feel like it's an easy enough read and it's pleasant enough that I don't really have a strong desire to DNF it, but I've been like this far in it for a while. So it might take a little while, but I am, I'm going to finish it. The other two books I'm in the middle of are both ebooks. The first one, which I'm further in, is A Declaration of the Rights of Magicians by H.G. Perry. This is a historical fantasy that's set in 18th century England and France and colonies. It's based on real political figures from that time, except in this sort of alternate history, they have magic. Only people that are from the aristocracy are even allowed to use magic, and nobody else has the right to. So if they're born with magic, they're basically identified, and if they ever use any magic, at all, except I think for self-defense, they get arrested. But um, a lot of, it's basically, you know, if you like reading historical novels about um, English politicians from the 18th century, this would probably be your cup of tea. I actually, I'm finding it very interesting. It's history that I know like a little bit about, enough that I've heard of the people that are characters in this book, but it's not something I know a ton about. Overall, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it. I just, as I mentioned in my September TBR, I accidentally let my copy of the ebook from the library expire, so I'm kind of waiting to get it back before I finish, but I'm about a third to a half of the way through the book. It's not like the most scintillating thing I've ever read, but overall I think it's well done. I kind of like what the author is doing, and I like historical fiction in general, so yeah. I was really enjoying it before I got distracted by other things I was enjoying more and let my copy expire. The other book that I just started is Senlin Ascends. Honestly, the first chapter seemed pretty great. I talked about this in my TBR for August, so I won't give like another synopsis or anything like that now. Honestly, I'm not in a place yet where I can talk too much about it, but it definitely seems like it's going to be a non-traditional fantasy. I like the author's writing style so far, and I'm hoping I'll really enjoy it, but 
but this is supposed to be a wrap up, not a TBR. And I have nothing to wrap up other than that mentioning I did start that book at the end of August. So now I'll move on to my actual wrapping up. So I got some positive feedback last month on my decision to go through my uh, previous month's wrap up in sort of order that I liked the books. So I'll try doing that again today. There was only one book that I read last month that I really didn't like at all, and it wasn't on my TBR. I don't really know I, why I decided to read it. It was just kind of a impulse read from the library, and um, that was Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. As you guys know, I don't read a ton of YA. I've definitely read YA books that I've liked before, um, but a lot of YA seems to fall kind of flat for me. I know that Shadow and Bone is Lee Bardugo's first published book, and the book that most people talk about from her is Six of Crows, um, but I'm just kind of this completionist where if there's a series, even if people sort of tend to like later books or like a later portion of an overall saga, I just like to start from the beginning, so that's why I read Shadow and Bone. Um, I didn't really know anything about it, going in. I knew that it was called the Grishaverse. I didn't know what a Grisha was other than uh, the Russian diminutive name for Grigory. It was just sort of historical inspired Russian flavored fantasy. Um, my problem with a lot of YA fantasy in that vein that I have tried recently is that I always think that the concepts and the synopses and the settings all sound really cool and then when I read the book I just don't really find any depth there and the characters tend to seem kind of shallow to me. I don't think this is true of all YA books. I certainly haven't read enough YA to say that that's even how I feel about YA. That was just my experience with a few things I've read recently. So Shadow and Bone really just wasn't for me. I felt like the characters just kind of made stupid decisions and I, I don't know, I, there wasn't much there in my opinion. Like it was, it was fine. I, it was short. That was its main saving grace. I mean, I know that Lee Bardugo can write. Uh, I read Ninth House by her, which is a dark contemporary fantasy. And that was, I mean, it was disturbing, but it was really good. And I think she's a great writer. And I'm sure she's improved since Shadow and Bone as well. But I can say, having read that, I really have no desire to read any of her other YA books. It's just, I heard her talked about so much on booktube in general and it was just kind of a, I guess an impulse read for me and now I read it already a few weeks ago so I don't even remember too many details from the story about other than that I just didn't really like it. Shadow and Bone was the only book I would say that I read this month that I really had like a negative reaction to so everything I'm talking about here on out is something that I generally enjoyed or at least had a mixed reaction to. I'm going to be talking about things in sort of the rough order of enjoyment that I had for them. This isn't a perfect ranking because even I feel like day to day which book would be you know more enjoyable than another it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling at the moment. So this is how I'm feeling today. I did something really uncharacteristic this month. I read two novellas and I've joked before that the only novellas I read are ones by Brandon Sanderson because you know they fit into the Cosmere but I actually I really enjoyed both novellas that I read. And I definitely have a preference for longer and more developed fiction, which is why I am kind of ranking both of these novellas at a, a lower ranking than the novels that I read. But I thought both were quite solid. I was glad to have read both and I was pleasantly surprised by how much development could be in a book that's only like 100 or 150 pages long. I've never really liked short stories very much. Um, because it's just such a different craft than a novel. And what I don't really like about them is in general, I feel like a short story has to have a, a punchline. Like you don't really get to get immersed in it. You don't really get to dwell in it. It's just, it has a point and it gets you there sometimes as shockingly as possible. So while I can be effective, I just, I don't get a lot of enjoyment out of reading them. And I think I was worried that that's how I would feel about novellas as well, even though it's a very different length. But Overall, I felt like I was surprised by how much development there was 
in 100 pages. I was able to get attached to characters and get sort of invested, not to the extent that I would with a longer book, but I enjoyed the experience of reading novellas and I will definitely consider reading more in the future. So the first one that I read was The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho, which is a sort of wuxia inspired story about a nun who falls in with a group of bandits uh, and neither the none nor the bandits are exactly what they seem. This is actually kind of more of a slower character paced story, even though the way it's set up you might expect a lot of action. But I overall quite enjoyed it. It didn't leave me with a super strong impression, but I liked the characters and the writing style and the setting quite a bit. Also, even though I read it on ebook, the cover of the book is beautiful, as you can see. I definitely feel like I would like to read more by Zen Cho. I really liked her writing style, and even though her other novels, from what I've seen, are not particularly in this setting, I just, I, I liked the aesthetic of this a lot, and it was the first one I read. It definitely encouraged me to try more novellas. The other novella that I read this month was This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This was actually the work that won the Hugo Award for uh, Best Novella this year, which was a category that I wasn't very interested in and didn't read anything in um, because, like I said, I don't usually do novellas. I actually listened to this one on audiobook, which was an interesting experience. Uh, it was about four hours long, which was actually kind of a nice length for listening to something. Sometimes, you know, I don't listen to things on audiobook that much, especially these days. I tend to listen while I clean or cook or do something around the house because I'm not driving all that much. Um, so anyway, this novella was science fiction. It is about two agents on two different sides of this very ill-defined time war. I think anyone who is familiar with Doctor Who and hears the word time war would sort of get that reference. You kind of expect it to be something that is taking place in multiple, you know, dimensions, times, planets, just very broad. Um, and I felt like that was definitely channeled here without having anything at all to do with Doctor Who. But you have two these two agents. One is from a sort of cyborgy, sci-fi futuristic side, and the other one is from a more, uh, I guess, uh, not like holistic, but earthy, hippie side. It's called Garden. They start corresponding by these secret letters that they are leaving for each other throughout time, and eventually they fall in love. So it's kind of an epic love story where it's sort of definitely like an enemies to lovers trope where the two of them are writing these letters across time and so you get little bits of narrative but mostly it's told through the letters. I thought, I listened to this on audiobook, the narrator did a really good job sort of capturing the personality of each of the agents. At first I didn't quite, you know, it was hard to remember who was who because the voices were similar, but I definitely felt like as it went on I got a really good feeling for each personality. I felt like, at least on audiobook, it did drag on a little bit. I felt like it didn't need to go for as long as it did, but it also developed in kind of a believable way, and I was really rooting for these characters by the end. The writing was also very beautiful. So Overall, I really enjoyed this book as well. It felt very different from anything that I had read recently. So now on to the full-length novels. I think the book that I had the most mixed feelings about while I still enjoyed it was The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. I did a review of this recently, which I will link to. Um, this is a book that started out so strong and then the middle was kind of a total mess and then kind of slightly redeemed itself at the end. I'm going to read book two this month in September so I'm hopeful that that will sort of keep my interest in the series. If not, we'll see. I feel like honestly the plot is way too convoluted to really try to describe in a wrap-up video like this. It is sort of a, a take on a traditional fantasy story where there's sort of an orphaned 
young man who comes from a noble family, but it really subverts all of those things. It's told from different points of views with the same character. There's some interesting timeline stuff happening and a lot of reveals and plot twists, like honestly, probably more than you really want in a book. The beginning hooked me. I feel like I'm kind of still hooked on the series just from that beginning. Uh, watch my review if you want to hear more about what I did and didn't like about this book. I'm putting this sort of at the, the lower end of my rankings for this month, although I did overall enjoy most of it. Also, I've mentioned before, I have a super hard time saying the word ruin, and I always have, I don't know why, and I've been getting so many books recently that have ruin in the title and it's just torturing me. So authors and publishers, if you could just stop publishing books that have the word ruin in the title, that would really be a huge favor to me and I will be able to talk about your books much more easily. Thank you. Another book that I had a slightly mixed reaction to but overall felt very positive about was Malice by John Gwynn. This is a book that's been everywhere on booktube recently. I have a review of that as well. Basically, despite the fact that it took me a long time to get into and it's a very traditional fantasy, uh, I actually felt really positive about it in the end and probably even more excited to read book two compared to how I felt about The Ruin of Kings. Um, by the end, I was very attached to the characters. I never thought I would enjoy another chosen one plot, but I actually kind of liked how it was handled and I'm looking forward to seeing how that continues to develop. John Gwynn writes really good action scenes. He writes sort of heroism and nobility. So even though I wasn't head over heels for Malice in the way that I think some people have been. I don't think that the book was overhyped at all. I think it was really quite good despite a few issues I had with it. I'm definitely looking forward to continuing the series. I'm also looking forward to getting a few more female characters in there. That is one thing. I feel like I'm sort of sick of reading books that are good but have almost no female characters and people say oh don't worry later books in the series have female points of view like do the authors have to wait to publish book one before they notice oh wait forgot about the women oh well but seriously I thought Malice was actually very strong I enjoyed it if not more than I expected to definitely more than I thought I would when I started reading like I said it took me quite some time to get into it it's not a super 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 long book it's not like Brandon Sanderson Robert Jordan long just you know normal fantasy length but by the end I was pretty hooked and it was hard to not just pick a book two right away. A book that I thought was really really good, I just finished reading it, was The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Cole. This is the third book in her Lady Astronaut series. I haven't had time to do a review for it because I finished it really recently, um, but I've really enjoyed this series overall and this was probably my favorite book in the series so far, I think. I don't want to say too much about it because I haven't filmed a review yet, but it's the whole series is basically, it's science fiction, but like historical science fiction, which isn't necessarily usually a thing, but basically the overall idea is that a meteor hit the earth a few years after World War II, and that is leading to a lot of climate change that's going to devastate the planet very, very quickly. So pretty much the entire world had to accelerate their various space programs. So it's tied closely to the actual history of humans in space, but just taken kind of further and developed to a logical conclusion. This third book was from the point of view of a different character who's a secondary character in the first two books. I really enjoyed her point of view a lot. It was very, very different than the point of view character we have in the first two books. I'll talk more about it in the review, but overall, uh, if you like science, history, strong female characters, mysteries. I think this book is really great. Probably my most anticipated book of this month was Harrow the Ninth. I have a very long review up of this book, so you should check that out if this is something you're interested in. I really liked it. I did not love it quite as much as Gideon the Ninth, but I don't think I was really supposed to. It was a very strange reading experience. Large portions of it were in second person. Overall, it was, I don't know what to say about it. It was very strange. It answered a lot of questions and created a lot more. I think in my review, I said that how I felt about this entire series would probably depend on how book three wraps things up. But overall, I mean, I was definitely glued to this book. I think it did what it needed to in terms of I was 
hooked. I feel like I really want to go and back and reread Gideon in the Ninth. And then this, I have a ton of questions. It was definitely a compelling reading experience. And even though I like to read some weird stuff, this was probably one of the weirder books I've ever read. It's not necessarily the sequel you're expecting after you read Gideon the Ninth, but I also like the fact that the author wasn't afraid to just totally do something different with book two. I read this at the beginning of the month. My husband actually just finished reading it, and I think he was kind of miserable for a lot of the time he was reading it because he had no idea what was happening and he got kind of angry at it. But then he finished sort of the last like quarter of it all in one sitting, and he was definitely hooked by the end as well. So I think overall he had a good experience with it even though it's I'm sure it's the weirdest thing he's ever read. There are like loud helicopter noises coming from outside right now so maybe there's some sort of like chase going on and my husband says he thinks he's going to be able to edit it out of the audio so if you do hear it sorry and if you don't hear it please give him a round of applause for his audio engineering skills. I am very grateful for all the background noise I've been able to ignore while recording because he's really good at getting rid of those things in Pro Tools. In our Cosmere reread last month, I read The Will of Ascension, and I was really surprised by how much I loved this book this time. When I originally read the Mistborn series, I'm pretty sure I liked Mistborn number one the most by far, um, but I was just, I identified with a lot of things in this book that I think I just didn't really connect to 10 years ago. I need to film a reread review of this very soon, so I don't want to say too much right now, but I'll just say Brandon Sanderson has this way of um, just conveying deep truths about people and the world, but like told in a way that's so simple that you almost could miss it if you're not paying attention, if that makes sense. He's obviously not a very flowery writer. Um, he doesn't try to be, but I found this book to be very powerful and I was just, even though I knew I liked the series, I was surprised by how emotional I got while reading this book. Stay tuned, I should have a reread review of this book sometime soon. Finally, I listened to The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden on audiobook, which took a lot of the month because I'm not getting through audiobooks very quickly right now, but I loved this book. It was a reread for me. I read the series, the Winter Night Trilogy, as it was coming out originally. I've actually filmed and not yet posted a review of The Bear and the Nightingale, so I won't say too much about it here, other than that this was another book that I loved way more as a reread, even though I enjoyed the original. I just found a lot of emotion and depth and just a lot to love in it. I don't know if in terms of enjoyment, but in terms of what book affected me the most emotionally in the end, I feel like it was probably The Bear and the Nightingale. Um, that's why I'm listing it, you know, as my highest ranked book in this wrap up. I think it was close between that and The Well of Ascension. And honestly, like I loved Harrow as well. It was just, it was a hard book to really truly enjoy because it was intensely frustrating. Um, but you know, I, I love being frustrated sometimes, so I don't really know how to pick between those top three, but right now that's kind of how I'm feeling the order. So that's what we went with. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of any of these books. Um, and a lot of them, I guess I had reviews for, so I'll make sure to link those in cards or just uh, down below in the description. So you can check out those reviews if you're interested to hear more of my thoughts. But thanks so much for watching.